People of God, I invite you, as you are able, to stand and join me this morning in our opening words of faith that come from Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise. Let your hand be ready to help me.
Good morning, and welcome to worship to all of you. It's so great to have you here. I invite you to take a seat. Well, it's great to be the people of God with you. So welcome to all those who are here in the sanctuary this morning. Welcome to all those who are worshiping uh, in the live stream uh, today or will view it at a later time. It is good to be the people of God together. There is a lot going on uh, in this life that we share in. In fact, this week, we tore the roof off this place. I mean, actually, we literally did. I mean, not like me and you, uh, but we did have uh, a hail damage roof and covered by insurance that the, our uh, place of worship where we're gathered in and sent out from uh, was reshingled uh, this week. So anyhow, maybe a fitting analogy. There is a lot going on, and God is at work through you and in this community. Um, just to kind of kind of get the ball rolling here, I want to invite our council president, Greg Newman, to come forward. And Greg's been involved with so many of our different projects, but he's got to share a word with us about the welcome appeal this morning. Well, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that, and uh, welcome. I, uh, I have some really great news today. Um, it's just so exciting for me that to announce that we have met our goal for the special appeal, and in fact, uh, because of all your generosity, we actually exceeded it. So congratulations, and well done, everybody. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. And uh, as maybe you've seen or you haven't seen, some of the projects have begun. Uh, if you look at the parking lot, we have started to fill in the cracks, and we've been working uh, on cleaning up the grounds a bit here, trimming back some trees, and uh, we've got the contractors lined up to go ahead and get the good work done. So if you recall, what we're going to be doing is that it's the driveway. We're going to seal it. We're going to paint it. We'll put those nice stripes back on there so we know where to park again. I always struggle with that. I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. <laughs> um, we have the sidewalks that we're going to go ahead and get those fixed up so they're not uneven. We're not going to have the yellow stripes on them to tell you there's a trip hazard. Probably don't want to have that. Um, I've talked to contractors about getting the outside of the building painted uh, just in locations where we're having peeling areas. And then also we're going to have the, the carpet taken care of as well. So that will all be taken care of. So because of your generosity, which really, really is great, that we have a door uh, assist that's on the front door for folks that need a little additional help getting in the doors. Those are very heavy doors. And uh, unfortunately, over time, uh, that mechanism, the mechanics in there have worn out. And uh, right now, um, they're working, but we're not sure when they're going to fail. So because of your kind generosity, I believe now we have money to go ahead and fix that as well. So one more step to, to making this a really welcoming place, more than what it already is. So it is great. So again, I want to thank you very much for your generosity. And uh, it's just, it's amazing how quickly this came together. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg, and thank you all for your partnership to make that ha happen, and it happens so quickly. And God is at work in lots of ways in this community. We've been in a call process seeking um, a full-time associate pastor, and today, after this worship service, uh, roughly around 11 o'clock, we're going to get started with that congregational meeting uh, for that sole purpose of calling an associate pastor. And so I hope you can stay and be a part of that. Uh, I just want to share with folks... Um, we do so many things where people connect both through live stream or other virtual ways that please know just for the confidential nature of a call process, uh, that's only going to be offered that meeting only in person. And that's uh, when you call a pastor and a pastor may be in another congregation out of respect for them, for that congregation, we don't want to put that across <laughs> all the airwaves. And so uh, anticipating hopefully that uh, that vote happens and that person is called, please know that that name of the person won't be publicly shared until they've had a chance after accepting the call to, to uh, have those conversations and inform the, the congregation that they currently would serve. So um, lots of exciting things. So I share that. Um, our uh, mission, I think, is going to be summed up well, and we're going to hear a reading from Ephesians. Paul writes to that early church at Ephesus. It's the mission that you know. It's the mission of, that everything that we do is for people to know God's amazing love, for it to shape our lives, shape how we treat each other. And to not just be a benefit to us, but blessed to be a blessing, to go out and shape it, to make this world become what God's dream is, where people know God's love and grace and justice uh, and mercy. 
And so, welcome to all of you today. Welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. Thanks for putting yourself out there and being here today. Um, excited to have celebrities like Alan Walker here with us today as well. I mean that sincerely, all these different folks. It's so wonderful to be the people of God uh, with you. And so I think when we talk about um, our building and grounds and we talk about a welcome appeal and pastors, what's it all about? It's about you and all people knowing God's amazing love, having it shape our lives and shaping this world. And so thank you for the privilege of being a part of this, being able to be a part of this journey with you. So welcome to worship. Uh, let's continue on together. Now together, let us search our hearts, confess to God, and be prepared to be reminded of that unwavering promise of forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With humility, we confess our sins before God and one another. Lord of new life, the birth of Jesus Christ changes the whole world, yet we struggle to change our own hearts. Forgive us when we fail to act and speak with compassion and humility. Forgive us for the things we have done and left undone. Forgive us for the things we say and have left unsaid. Move us and shape us to be who you need us to be for the sake of our neighbor. Amen. Now hear this good news. Because of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, our pasts are left behind us, and God forgives the sins of the world. Your sins have been washed away, and you have been given new life. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you. Now please join me in our prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God of eternal goodness, you came that we may have life and have it abundantly. You are the true bread that gives life to the world. Help us to be renewed and strengthened for this journey of faith. Guide us and lead us in all that we are so that we build others up and help all people to be blessed by your transforming love. Amen. All right, well, worship's for all generations, but this little uh, segment especially, we'd love to have uh, any of our children to come on up and we can kind of gather uh, here in the front. And if you're not quite sure, you can even come up after we get started. That takes some courage, too, coming forward, and we can feel a little bashful, and that's, that's normal. But good to have you here. I want to share with you a little Bible story for starters this morning. And you guys can spread out to wherever you're, you're comfortable sitting. I want to share with you um, a story, and it's pretty neat that, you know, Jesus has called us to follow, and with that, uh, there was a person named Paul who our Lord spoke to, and he started a mission of going all over the place telling people the good news, right, that Jesus loves them, right? And in our world back then and now, we need to hear that. Now, back then, uh, Paul, there wasn't uh, airplanes and things like that, so how did they usually get most places? They walked, right? 
And so you see that here. He's gathering with folks, and they're worshiping, and they're baptizing, and all these people knowing the good news of Jesus, that they're loved. And he'd walk from place to place, and he'd go to places like uh, a town called Ephesus that you're going to hear. Um, he wrote a letter to those people that we'll read in a moment today. And he's going there. Sometimes he'd go several miles, and sometimes he would take a boat to get different places, right? All for the sake of more and more people knowing about Jesus and Jesus' love for them. Isn't that a pretty awesome thing? Now, part of being in this uh, church, too, says uh, for people to know God's amazing love, it takes all of us. And so he talks about um, all the, some of the different gifts that we have. And all of you, we'll talk about that in a moment, you've got different gifts and abilities. Did you know that? And sometimes we don't even think that we have gifts and abilities because it's just part of who we are. But I want you to hear that many times, including today, that God has gifted you in some wonderful ways. And Paul says, talks about some of the different gifts, he says, some of you um, have been given gifts to it. Some would be apostles, some would be prophets, some would be evangelists, some would be pastors and teachers, right? And why? To equip the saints for ministry. So we all have different, um, different parts that are needed. Like we've got our bodies, right? You need your feet and your arms and your legs and your head, right? All these different parts. Um, what's this part right here? Elbow. Where do you use and how do you, what are some things during the day that you don't even think about but you need to use your elbow for? So, yeah, so we need to bend it for lots of stuff, right? What were you going to say? Drink a glass of water. I'm so glad we did rehearsal last night on this. That's the perfect answer, to drink a glass of water. Um, and so I'm thinking, but for drinking a glass of water, is it kind of hard to drink a glass of water if you can't bend your elbow? That's what I'm going to try to try to do. That's, no, that's cool. That's exactly right. So how do you think this is going to go? <laughs> I'm a little nervous about it, but my kids think it's funny because if anything happens that's humiliating to Dad, thumbs up for them, right? I probably should have thought this through a little bit better. Some of you are liking this anticipation more than you should. I should have worn my swim trunks. That's, that's right. All right, we got, a, we got a congregational meeting after this. I got to keep rolling, I guess. Here it goes. Ah, it wasn't water. I'm too much of a coward, right? But all the same, right, if you're going to even dump you know, yarn on your head, right? If you want to drink out there, get, we'll use your elbow. Yeah, that's right. You can't go days without drinking water. And so if you, you know, can't use your elbow, you got to figure something out, right? So as we say that, we need our elbow. And I hope you're, you know, appreciate the elbow. That's a wonderful thing. But I want you to know that we need all of you. And can you look around? You see all these folks behind us? And people who aren't here, just people who are worshiping from home, you name it, to be part of this mission that we share. People know God's amazing love. We need everybody. I want you to think about this, some of the gifts that you have. I think of some of your gifts are, and you might think it's not much, but I think it's huge. Some of you, your kindness, you make the rest of us feel at home. We feel valued, Right? Or some of you have gifts uh, for swimming. Some have gifts for playing outside. Lots of different gifts. And so many times I want you to hear those different gifts that you have because God needs all those different gifts. Right? And also we can use those gifts to build and encourage each other and help everyone know about God's amazing love. So we need you. We need all of us together. Would you go ahead and you uh, pray with me? You can put your hands together. If you'd like, you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to see that we are all needed and valued. We are the body of Christ together. Help us to know your love and share it with others. We love you, God. Put your hands up. Now all God's children say, amen. All right, thanks so much. Great to be a part of worship with you today.
Today's lesson comes from Ephesians 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave us were some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but seeking, but speaking the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. As you gather us in, we give thanks for the gift of your Holy Spirit and the gift of your word. And help us to hear you what you want us to hear that you may set us free to live as you hope for us to live. Amen. In that letter uh, to the folks who made up the church at Ephesus, there's a lot going on there. A couple things I want you to hear on that. At the heart of it says, Paul says, I want you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called. Saying, I want you to know Jesus' amazing love for you. And I want it to show up in how you treat each other, right? In being humble, being kind, being generous, being one people together. Then he goes on about that, of how we're going to do this, how are we going to function as church, or as he calls it, the saints of God. Saying, man, you've all been given different gifts, and this is a big thing. We want all people to know God's amazing love, so let's encourage each other. Let's equip the saints. Let's point out each other's gifts. Let's do whatever it takes to get out of people's way to use their gifts to do what? To build up the body of Christ, right? To build up other people so that ultimately all folks come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Not knowledge as in this intellectual thing, but that they know God's amazing love for them and it shapes them in this world. That's the mission that you and I are called to be a part of. As we do this, I want to give thanks for our friends and uh, the residents at the Legacy and at uh, Trinity Terrace. Whatever good comes out of this sermon, it's because I owe it to you guys. (laughs) I wanted this as we start this, who in your life, think about your story. We need those people who encourage us. Can you think of someone in your life, or maybe it's multiple people, where they were valuable to you, they were the people who built you up. Can you picture who that might be? Somebody who encouraged you when you didn't have a lot of hope in yourself? Can you picture somebody in their words or their actions that they made you felt, they made you feel valued when you wondered if you had any value? Can you picture them? Can you remember that? Maybe they took time and, and pointed out gifts in you that you didn't realize that you had or you didn't really think they were gifts. I think a friend of mine who um, said, boy, going through middle school is like I felt so awkward on all fronts of my life. And here this track coach takes me aside and says, wow, you're amazing. Man, you're just the person I've been looking for. He always felt so, so awkward with his long arms. said, I need a discus thrower, and you are going to be that person. <laughs> it might sound funny, but for him, that helped him have confidence in lots of different ways. It built him up. 
Can you picture who those people are for you? I think of this uh, story, picture a young child with a group of adults at a fancy Italian restaurant. And they're there, and the waitress comes to the table and has taken everyone's order, and folks are ordering, you know, veal parmesan and all these different things, and the waitress looks at the young child and says, and what would you like to eat today? And the child says, a hot dog with ketchup. And one of the adults at the table says, hey, I'm paying for this whole meal. This is the finest Italian restaurant in three states. You're not having a hot dog, you know. And the waitress walks away and winks at the child and says, one hot dog with ketchup coming right up. And the little child looks around the table thinking, like, is this real? And it looks and says, hey, she thinks I'm real. Isn't that awesome? When how someone in their words encouraging you, building you up, letting you know have value, they have made the love of Christ real to you. It's not just an abstract idea. They have driven it home that where you know that you're loved and valued, you have been built up. I encourage you today, and you think of those people, if they're still living, <laughs> they're on this side of the resurrection, would you let them know that they're one of your people, <laughs> that you encourage them, that that's been a gift for them, and maybe the person now lives in the promise of the resurrection, well, can you tell that story of what they've done for somebody else? It's part of who we are, right? And the story doesn't end there. I think of this, this last week, I mentioned the residents at uh, Legacy and Trinity Terrace having folks share about uh, times where they didn't think they were worth much value. You know, oftentimes our jobs or the sport we play, um, that kind of seems to define who we are. Then something changes in our health and we can't do some of those things we want to do. We're worth more than that, but sometimes we question our value. Or one lady talking about receiving notes, receiving phone calls, letting her know what a gift she was and how needed those words were. That's powerful stuff, to be encouraged and built up. Or maybe for you, maybe it was uh, a parent, a mom or dad or a grandpa or grandma. Maybe it's a friend, a coach, a teacher. Who were those folks for you? I think of this as we're called to build up the body of Christ, build each other up so that all know God's amazing love. I think of years ago I had a chance to go with a group of high school students out to the Black Hills to something called Peer Ministry Camp. And some of you might be uh, familiar with peer ministry, but you're teaching these peers these skills of being attentive, right, to their classmates, what's going on with them. And not that any of us can solve all the problems, but when we see there's something going on with our friend, right, with this person we've just met, can we get them connected with resources that are helpful for them? Can we let them know that they matter, that they're valued, whether it's welcoming them to youth group or getting them connected uh, with something to see them through a difficult time? So we're out at this uh, peer ministry camp in the Black Hills, and the founder and the director of the camp uh, spoke to us one night at a campfire. And this director is about 75 years old, but don't let that number fool you. He hiked us through the Black Hills, and the rest of us adults and kids are just wheezing, and luckily enough, Dick Bohr would, would stop and tell stories to allow us to catch our breath. So there he is standing around the campfire, and he says, I want to share with you a story. The story about a young couple it says, man, when they got married, everybody thought they were way too young. She was 18, he was 19, they met at college. He was a running back, she was a cheerleader. It says they were much more than that, but that's kind of how they were known around campus. So folks who thought they were way too young to get married also thought a year and a half later when they were pregnant that it was too soon for them to have kids as well. They were uh, traveling in the summer and wanting to see some extended family. And so they're staying one night in this boarding house in a kind of small town, pretty remote location. And that night, she goes into labor. And it's a difficult labor. And things are not going well. And there's not a midwife or some sort of person with medical uh, expertise that they know around, and so things are chaotic. And as you know, when a labor's not going well, the longer that goes on, they're worried about uh, the safety and the health of the child. This goes on several hours. People are running in and out of the boarding house. They're screaming, trying to get some help where it's hard to find. The good news is that morning, that baby was born. 
and they were concerned about the baby's health, uh, what it experienced, if it had enough oxygen, all these things. Well, the good news is the baby came through it just fine. While that was going on, here was this mom always saying, no, just take care of the baby. Just make sure my baby's going to be okay. And in the chaos of it all, what folks didn't realize was how much she'd been hemorrhaging. And she died that morning in that boarding house. Our storyteller looks at us and gets a little choked up and says, I need you to know, that was my mom. And I'm that little baby. I never had the chance, he said, to talk with my mom, but I'd heard how excited she was to meet me. And that morning, it fit her personality when they said, no, don't worry about me, just make sure that my baby is okay. And I heard about how much she loved me and just couldn't wait to spend time with me. And it hits me day after day that in the eyes of my mom, I had a life that's worth dying for. A life that's worth dying for. So that's part of why I have this camp out in the Black Hills. That's why I want you to see you to encourage each other to pass that along because I have a life that's worth dying for. Now this morning, we're not gathered around a campfire, but we are gathered as the people of God. And you have one in our Lord Jesus who loves you, who has called you by name, called you to follow, loves us so much that even if you were the only person on the earth, was willing to go to the cross and die and was raised again. I hope you've got people who build you up and encourage you, but I want you to hear this. Our Lord Jesus looks at you and says, to me, you are a life that was worth dying for. That's how valuable you are. And may you know that love and forgiveness, may it shape you and be so powerful you can't help but even pass it on to others as well. You have a life that's worth dying for. Our mission that we share is for people to know that they have a life that's worth dying for. We never know the situation of the person sitting next to us. I think of, through the years, how hard I, I realize, and I don't even know if I, I don't think I realize, how hard it is to be a teenager. And with that, ooh, sorry, um, some of the different challenges they go through. I think of uh, wonderful young folks who um, are cutting themselves. Y- younger folks who, they wonder if they have any value. <laughs> Man. As a church, we want them to know that they have a life that's worth dying for. Or the retiree or somebody else who, other things in life that used to define them aren't there anymore and they wonder their value. Man, we want you to know that you have a life that's worth dying for. We want us to know every place in between. In order for us to carry that ministry out, as Paul says, we've been given different gifts. We're called to equip the saints. That is, point out the gifts for each other, encourage each other, empower so we can build up the body of Christ and have all folks know this amazing love for them. That's the awesome mission that we get to be a part of. That's why we do a welcome appeal. That's why we call a pastor. Uh, That's where I think some of you, whether your gifts are in worship, so people can experience God's love that way. Or some of you who are doing caregiving ministries, so people know it that way. Or you're equipped in your home, your workplaces, with the abilities that you've been gifted with to build others up. Man, we need all of you. I think of this, um, we're going to try some different things this uh, week, or this week, this uh, program year in September, First Wednesday Worship, a time of trying to intentionally bring different generations together to interact. Why? So that they know that they have a life that's worth dying for. Why are we calling a pastor today? Why are we doing all these things? So that we can carry out this mission together. I think of this, um, our year of internship has gone by quickly. And I'm so proud of you as a congregation and you as our intern pastor. Well, two years ago, and we said, you know, we're not quite ready to call an associate pastor, but you know what? What's our opportunity here? Hey, we could do an internship year. We didn't know all the details of what had happened, but I'm so glad that we did that. And part of what Pastor Sarah, uh, what makes you a great pastor, is you get that it's not about you. <laughs> that it's about God's work through the people equipping the saints for ministry, empowering, encouraging, naming gifts that we share in this ministry together, and that's an awesome thing. And Pastor Sarah, you are going to be a real blessing for congregations out there in the future as well. I think of that as we go. Um, A young man uh, sharing his story, he was vulnerable and open enough to share that he's been struggling with eating disorders. 
He's one of our assistant football coaches. Think about that. Something that we maybe don't have our eyes open to. Here, part of the church is, is at work in this assistant coach who lets young athletes know their value, their value not just as a football player, but as a person. <laughs> Sharing some of his struggles, some of his challenges, so that they don't have to go through some of the same hurts. <laughs> to let them know their value. That's an awesome thing. The church is everywhere. When we started this message today, I was asking you, who are those people in your life who've built you up, who've encouraged you, who've named your gifts? That's a powerful thing they did. And the awesome thing is the story continues, just as Paul writes. You and I are sent out from here to continue that work of equipping the saints for ministry. And why are we going to do this in all these places? And we need all y'all. So with that, why? that we can live lives worthy of the calling to which we've been called. That we can build up the body of Christ so that all people know God's amazing love. So that all folks know that they have a life that in the eyes of Jesus Christ was more than worth dying for. God's blessings to you. Amen. Friends, I invite you now to join me as we confess our faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Now, as we join together in our intercessory prayers, at the conclusion of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, at which time I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Lord, you provide all that we need. As we see the effects of drought, we ask for much needed rain for crops, for the production of food, and for the well-being and livelihood of your people. We think of those who have lived with the reality of drought and famine as a constant through the years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have promised to be with us always till the end of the age and to be with us through things that we cannot understand. We struggle and hurt as loved ones' lives end way too soon. We ask your blessing on the family and friends of Jean Spars. We also ask your blessing on Lynn Hammond and her family at the loss of her father. As we trust in the promise of your resurrection, be with them in their grief and provide them all that they need through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are at work in the ordinary and extraordinary. We give thanks for a new roof for this place where you gather us in to worship and grow and send us out to serve. We give thanks for the generosity that provides for repairs and maintenance of this building and grounds. May we be blessed to be a blessing to others and show your sense of welcome, generosity, and love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have called us by name and promised to be with us always. We lift up those who are battling cancer, recovering from surgery, living with depression, and any other challenges to health. May your people feel accompanied, cared for, and bless them with healing, courage, and hope in all that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Throughout this call process for an associate pastor, and in all things, we have one constant. We need you, Lord. We ask your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us today as this congregation votes on calling an associate pastor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to lead a life worthy of the calling to which we have been called. Thanks for those who have built us up, who have made, us Christ, who have made Christ's love real to us. We give thanks for those who have encouraged us and valued us. We give thanks for experiences that you have been at work through that have strengthened our connection with you, Lord. Help us now to have unity in you and to continue the work of equipping the saints to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you now to turn and share a sign of peace with those seated nearby. Now, as we move into a time of offering, um, I am struck after listening to Pastor Kevin, um, which is how amazing this congregation is in doing just that equipping of the saints, of how good you all are of making this beautiful home, the way you come together with your time, your energy, your prayers, your spirit, and your financial gifts that take care of this building that 
bring us to this place where you all can be calling a pastor to come in. Your gifts that have allowed me to be here in this wonderful past year. And I am in awe of the beautiful ways that you all come together, work together as that body of Christ. Um, for those of you, our younger friends who may have brought an offering this morning, we do have our fish bowls out. You can come drop um, an offering here. Um, for those slightly more experienced friends who brought a paper envelope, there is a basket outside the sanctuary doors where you can leave that. Or as you see on the screen, there are just a number of ways that you can continue to give virtually. All of your gifts, everything that each and every one of you bring into this community and this body are so deeply appreciated. Bye. 
thank you for that great witness. As we give thanks to God for all that we've been blessed with, let's uh, join together in the offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for our Lord Jesus who has called you, called us to follow together, and comes to us in this meal of Holy Communion. Let's join together in these words of the great thanksgiving. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, you have filled all creation with light and life. The heavens and earth are full of your glory. Through the ages of time you have spoken and renewed your promise to every generation. And in sending your Son, you have revealed your kingdom and proclaimed your power. So we give thanks to you, O Lord, for the salvation which you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. And it was on that night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink. He this cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take uh, your communion packet. And for some, maybe this is uh, new to you. But in order to receive the bread, I invite you to open up that uh, top cellophane tab. So open up and to receive the bread. Know that these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. So hear this promise, that this is the body of Christ given for you. After receiving the bread, I invite you to open that second tab up and to open the juice. And hear this promise, that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you who have uh, children or others who are with you who aren't currently receiving the bread and the wine, do you offer them this blessing? Maybe if you want to put your hand on their shoulder or make the sign of the cross on their forehead. Or can you say this? Child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. God loves you. And may you all receive this blessing. That may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. As our time of, uh, of worship together is concluding, I want to lift up a couple of announcements as we go. Um, one is, as I, I kind of alluded to in our sermon time, um, next Sunday, August 22nd, will be the last Sunday of our internship year uh, with Pastor Sarah. And so after this year, she'll be heading back to Luther Seminary for one more year of uh, seminary studies or graduate school studies. And then she will be into the call process, and some congregation will be blessed uh, to call you as their pastor. Um, it's important to begin well and to end well. And so next Sunday, um, we want to have a time together. We're going to have a fellowship time after each of the worship services uh, in honor of our uh, intern pastor, Sarah Jensen. And then each worship service will also include a service of sending uh, as well. Today, uh, in just a few moments, we are going to um, have our special congregational meeting. So all 
uh, confirmed members are able to uh, vote at that meeting. Um, and as I shared a little before, um, we won't do this online, so we'll say goodbye to all of our online and live streaming friends. And we'll, that meeting will be held just in person. And with just the confidential nature of we protect the identity of that person until they've accepted the call, informed their congregation, uh, and that's, that's known before we um, share those names either informally or formally uh, in any sort of public way. And so uh, I ask your continued prayers as we uh, enter into this, uh, this step of the process. And so, uh, people of God, if you're able, I'm going to invite you uh, to stand to receive our final blessing. And... Uh, Kids, you're invited to come up after the blessing to grab an instrument and join in making music in our final song. So receive this blessing as you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. talents and tongues employ reaching out with a shout of joy bread is broken the wine is poured christ has spoken and seen and heard jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word around lives about jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word around lives about christ is able to make us one table he sets the tone teaching people to live to bless god in word and in deed express jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word around moves about jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word around moves about jesus calls us in sends us out bearing fruit in our world of doubt us love to tell bread to share god emmanuel everywhere jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word of love moves upon jesus lives again earth can breathe again as the word of love moves upon go in peace serve the lord Thanks be to God.